top five Reddit stories about mythical creatures. Number one, the ocean mermaid. For most of us, mythical beings are a thing of imagination. But for one Reddit user, their most frightening fantasy was reality. This is their story. When I was 11 years old, a lifetime ago, my family went on the only real vacation we ever had to a city near the, near the beach. We had an actual hotel room, not a motel, that overlooked the ocean and it seemed like the fanciest thing ever. When we went to the beach itself though, it was gross and I hated it. There was trash everywhere and I swear the water smelled like what I recognize now as formaldehyde. In addition to having a greasy slick on it, my parents insisted on enjoying our first time at the beach to the fullest and made me and my little brother swim, even though I didn't want to. I was just big enough. I knew I shouldn't cry, but damn, I wanted to. I stalled and inched my way back, but my mom got fed up and my dad ended up grabbing me and carrying me into the water, which was uncomfortably warm and only stank worse than it had at the beach once it was on me, in my nose and my face. My dad threw me out into the water laughing, like if we were playing at the public pool back home, but I just wanted to swim back to the shore. The whole time my brother had been quietly paddling in the water, too young to be as grossed out as I was, or maybe just not caring because this had been exciting to see the ocean for the first time. Preoccupied with me, my parents didn't realize for a few minutes that my brother had slipped under the surface and hadn't bobbed back up like he had before. When my mom screamed, Dad and I both forgot our issues and dove into the gray-blue coastal water, greasy film, stench and all, to try and find him. It wasn't hard. Almost as soon as we realized he wasn't with us, he popped up a few hundred feet away. He said he'd been pulled but swam back as hard as he could. My parents laughed in relief, assuming he hit an undercurrent and joked about how strong a swimmer he was for his age. But I finally broke and swam straight for the shore, sobbing. They decided that was enough excitement for the day and relented, packing up to go back to the hotel. I never told them when I dove down to look. As he broke the surface and caught our attention, I saw something in the water. I saw a hand right near his floaties, and staring at me I saw a face with sharp teeth and gray skin, and bright green eyes staring at me. It smiled and fitted away, as fast as it appeared. I've never been back to the ocean since. Number 2. The Tiny Fairy One day, I was walking my dog and as I walked, I kept my gaze looking down at the ground. When I look up, there was a weird green bug. At first, I figured it was a flying praying mantis, so I just stood there watching it for a couple seconds. Then I saw that it was wearing a little green dress, and it had a small head with short brown hair, but its wings weren't what I pictured a fairy's wings to look like. It looked more like a hummingbird's wings. So I stood there with my mouth hanging open and I watched it land, but when I stepped over to find it, it was gone. And there was also these weird white little bugs that appeared out of nowhere. I downloaded Reddit just so I could openly talk about this. I figured this platform wouldn't assume I'm insane. Number three, the Kelpie sighting. Legends and fairy tales are a matter of perspective. You can look at them as having at least some footing in reality, which tends to skew towards supernatural, or you can view them as a clever way to warn children and young adults of dangers. Among the many stories passed down from ages ago is the legend of the Kelpie. The Kelpie is a Scottish tale about a spirit that is found in or near bodies of water. Almost every large body of water in Scotland has its own variation of the spirit. Although most can be sorted in two categories, in one version the Kelpie is a beautiful young man or woman that lures its victim into the water with its charm and looks until the victim has followed them out past the shore and is drowned. The other version says the water spirit appears as a horse. 
This is what they saw. I had got off work early, but I worked third shift. So by that time, all the liquor stores were closed. But I had a bottle of liquor I'd stuffed under my seat to last until morning. I made my way to the four-way intersection leading to the bypass. But instead of going left to go back to my lonely apartment, I turned right down the country road. This time of year was especially nice because the night was warm enough you wouldn't freeze if you passed out walking home, and the night sky was clear with tiny dots twinkling. It was nights like these that I liked to go out to the waterfall and just watch the rapids roll by and listen to the sounds of the night. Things seemed the same as always as I pulled onto the driveway towards the Christian camp. The waterfall lay just before the parking lot after the bridge. I grabbed the fifth back from under my seat and made my way to the shore. There was about 20 feet of sandy shore that gave way to, to broken up rocks. The support beams for the bridge, giant eye beams were buried somewhere deep underwater and they sat about three feet off the shore. So even though the water drops off pretty steep, as long as you can stretch your step out, you can actually sit on the cross beam a few feet above the water and not risk falling in. The water is down a tad a bit today, so it's easier than usual. Once I have a foot on and a good handhold, I set the bottle down and I plop myself down beside it. I was still a functioning alcoholic at this point. I sat there and drank for a while, singing to myself, when I heard a splash somewhere to my right. I looked, but the water on the right was still fairly calm, so I brushed it off as maybe a fish jumping or a tree branch falling. I took a few more sips. I'm not trying to get drunk anymore. I'm already there. I'm just passing the time at this point when I hear another splash to my right. This time it's a bit closer and a bit louder, so I struggle to stand up, holding on to the beams to sturdy myself. Once my vision lines up right, I see a horse staring at me in the middle of the creek. You know how you hear people say that in intense struggle or distress, it seems like things quiet down, like even the mosquitoes and the birds are quiet, perhaps hiding from what they sense to be a predator. But through years of working indoors and being sealed off from nature, we've lost the ability to sense that. I didn't feel any of that, not yet. What I, the guy who knows nothing about horses other than they are big and like carrots, thought I was staring at the most majestic, beautiful thing I had ever seen. Its hair was perfectly tamed and even seemed to reflect off the moonlight. It was pale but slightly off color in a warm and inviting way. And just looking at me, I knew it wanted me to come closer, but I knew I was drunk and that I couldn't swim in my current state, especially not that far out. So instead, I rolled up my pants and waded out about shin deep into the water. I thought if I approached calmly, maybe this glorious creature would come closer to meeting me halfway, but it did no such thing. The horse just stayed where it was, standing in the middle of the creek, looking at me. I waded a little bit deeper, and I knew that I was getting wet and cold, but this horse, this creature, I just had this overwhelming desire to get closer to it, to pet it, to see how it felt to touch its fur. Pretty soon I was chest deep in the water and only two or three steps away from touching this beast when something in me broke. Something inside of me clicked that I was in a trance and that there was no way that this thing was standing there impossibly still as I struggled to keep from being flooded away. And I was only chest deep this horse was standing, which meant that's when the hairs on my neck stood up and in my stupor I realized that something was very, very wrong. I swam slash ran back to the shore, straight to my truck, and dove into the door. As soon as I was in, I jammed the keys in and turned on the lights to see nothing, not a sound, not a footstep, nor a splash, nor any indication that there was ever a horse there to start with. Nonetheless, I sure as shit wasn't getting out to look for clues, and I flew out of there so fast that my old truck drifted for, through the last few turns of the Windy Creek Road. I hit the country road and did 90 all the way back to the intersection. Once I was far, far away from that place, I calmed down and went to bed.
The next day I was off, and as I sobered up, I chalked it up to pink elephants you find in cheap vodka. It wasn't until a few weeks later that my sister was talking about a project that she had for one of her classes when she mentioned that it was on Kelpies. She must have seen the horror in my face as she explained the legend to me. To this day, I don't know what I truly saw, but I do know, real or not, I did come very close to drowning. I also know that every time I've drank since then, I can feel the falls calling me, and I know the water is there, always there, churning and waiting for me. Number four, the sneaky gremlins. Gremlins, fucking gremlins. They were on the submarine I was stationed on, and they made our lives miserable some days. I'm pretty sure there was a different one for each division on the boat, and they just broke our, our equipment, seemingly at random. I only saw one of them once, but there was no mistaking what it really was. We had a fire in a switchboard the day before my division's equipment, and as I walked by, I saw this tiny, somewhat humanoid, looking creature scurry from that switchboard to another. It looked like it was made of electricity, like a ball of lightning in a four inch tall humanoid form. A couple days later, the switchboard it went to caught fire. Number five, werewolf sighting. Me and my friend had known each other for quite some time. Most of that time, he lived in town. This is an 8,000 population town, literally in the dead center of Illinois. On the edge of town, a country highway, there's, a, there's the remnants of a small pig farm and slaughterhouse, which is now run down, the land of which his family used to hunt on in the 80s. I started staying out at his house much more than usual. We would explore the woods during the day. One day, when we were out in the woods, we came across a pond of decent size, and there's a small island in the middle of it. I saw that my friend had seen something, and immediately his face went pale. He told me that we need to go, and he hightails it without waiting for me, and I follow close behind. I keep asking what's going on, but he won't answer me. We finally get back to his house where we find his parents sitting in the kitchen. They see his face and they ask him what's wrong. He tells his dad that he found the pond. His dad looks sick and I again ask what the heck is going on. Now his dad was a pretty straight laced fellow, not really a sense of humor to speak of since I met him and would only enjoy a glass of expensive whiskey when he was in the mood. He decided that now was one of those moods. After getting his glass and taking a sip, he makes us promise to stay away from the pond and tells us his story. When he was younger, his dad took him and his brother to hunt out there. This incident happened when he was about 19 and well seasoned. They got out early and decided to set up by this pond. Slow day, only a couple deer that weren't worth anything. Starting to get the idea, a new spot was needed. They heard a rustling from outside the pond across from them. It was a wolf, and wolves weren't known to be in our area. It looked as if it was investigating. Then it stood up on its hind legs and walked into the water, Swam, swam to the middle, but walked up onto the island. Again in two legs, it stood there before lying down and seemed to fall asleep. They decided to wait to make sure it didn't notice them and then slowly backed out, getting back to the truck as quick as possible, never to go back there to hunt again. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments below about your experience with a mythical creature.